Facebook. Yep. Now, the rest of the world, like Paul Kelly said, are watching this case. Mm. What do you make of the way the government's managed it? Look, I think it's a very complex situation. I think mistakes were made last week by Facebook, and they've, they've uh, admitted that. What's important now is people are back at the negotiating table. We've got to get a code here that's workable, uh, that encourages investment, that encourages innovation, that encourages competition, that rewards good journalism, um, that encourages, you know, um, openness and transparency... Uh, in how contracts are done. And we've got to get something that's workable and lasting. But we've also got to remember, and, and last week really showed this, that the community wants these platforms. Mm. They, they use them and nothing was really demonstrated more than how important those platforms are for people to get information, not just to communicate with their friends and family, but to get important information. So it's great to see the government back at the table. Look, I think everyone's got to try and compromise here because, you know, who's at the, whose interest has got, has got to serve? It's got to serve the public interest. You've released some analysis in the last few days on the enterprise bargaining system uh, and the Business Council warns that this, basically the system is at risk of collapsing the Hawke-Keating model. Yeah. And this is, you argue, a big problem for workers because workers on EBAs are, on average, according to your analysis, $100 better off per day of Correct. work. Correct. So, so this... how, how does the government's proposal help yeah. amend that? So, the, so it's part of a package, you know, casuals, uh, permanent part-time, greenfield agreements. But let's just go to the enterprise agreement part of the package, which is very important to, to us, because what it seeks to do is retain but improve what's called the better off overall test. And it's the application of that test since a particular case in 2016, which has become um, better off in every single circumstance as opposed to better off overall. And how does it seek to fix this, the legislation before us now? The first thing it does is to give um, importance to the agreement of the parties. Now, that is crucial to the union movement because it says we're going to respect parties coming together and 95% of all workers on an EBA, or on a union EBA. So I, I don't understand the trade union's objection to this particular thing because, you know, when unions are really valuable to their members is when they're at the enterprise level negotiating on their behalf. This says we're going to respect the agreement of those parties. Getting rid of all these technical things that hold agreements up, in some cases for 300 days. In the case of Bunnings, you know, an agreement where workers would have been getting paid 23% more got held up into technicalities, complexities. People just walked away from it. That's a pay rise that people didn't get. Things like hypothetical workers where the Commission, the Fair Work Commission, is giving consideration to a hypothetical worker. That is someone who doesn't work in an entity. Mm. Um, you know, that, those sorts of things are absurd. And, and the reason that I'm so passionate about this goes to Tanya Plebisek's point, and I agree with her about this. We want to be a country that makes things, that does advanced manufacturing, that gets into space and aerospace, that does high-value agriculture. You can't do that if you can't get changes at a workplace level in terms of rostering, how people use new technology, uh, how they train people. That has got to be a negotiation between employers well, the jobs, and employees. The jobs have changed so dramatically. Exactly. But the, the system hasn't evolved. That's right. And people say Is to that, me, that's, the that's exactly problem. right, Kieran. And when I say to companies, why don't you do a bit more here? Why don't you ambitiously bargain? Why don't you try and really have a lot of innovation with your workers? They say, because of the boot test because it's just too hard. And what they end up doing is staying on an award, or what they call an award plus a little bit more than last time. And, and that's a disaster for, for us going forward, because EBAs, as you say, people get paid more, but absolutely essential. If we want to be a modern economy and we end up being a really inflexible economy, we won't get the sort of jobs that Tanya is talking about. I agree with her about that. What sort of decline have you seen in terms of We've seen a the numbers 60, of EBAs? We've seen a 60% decline since 2009. They're at their lowest level in 22 years. And I would have thought, instead of, you know, rock throwing and, you know, the usual thing that goes on with important legislation, we try and work out, well, OK, let's look at the safeguards. Well, could they be improved? Well, I'm open for that. You know, I'm, I'm happy to work with the ACTU and say, well, OK, if you want that improved, let's improve it. Yeah, well, hopefully that spirit of cooperation that we saw at the height of the pandemic... Returns. Well, that's what you want to embed in the enterprise agreement system. And people say the system was flexible. It wasn't flexible. People had to sit down award after award and renegotiate things. Well, why don't we take that? And, that, and I think the ACTU acted with great integrity in that. But now let's take that spirit of cooperation, embed it into the system at the enterprise level 
where these big decisions about how workplaces are going to evolve are going to happen. Finally, on the vaccine rollout yep. tomorrow, in your mind as a representative of some of our largest organisations, how important is it this, that this works and that people buy into it and that the anti-vaxxers are kept as a really small minority? Totally agree with Paul Kelly about that. Look, this is hugely important to confidence in business. Um, it's hugely important to getting, uh, you know, that momentum that is built up in the economy to stay and then get extra momentum. What, what I think has to happen, though, Kieran, is that we have to make sure that as we roll it out, we are releasing more and more of the economy uh, as the vaccine rolls out and that we are working towards that nationally consistent system for how you manage local, lockdown, uh, local lockdowns, local outbreaks, nationally consistent system for how you manage quarantine, better quarantine. Um, we obviously have to make sure that the, the kind of um, information that we're giving to people is about you know, hospitalisation and intensive care. Um, but absolutely to your point and to Paul Kelly's point, we need to make sure that, that we respect the fact the government has been very prudent in this. I think the community should have trust in this. I'll be having the vaccine as early as I'm eligible to have it. The one good thing about having turned 60 last year is that I'm up further up the list, so I'll be having it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And making sure that we build confidence mm -hmm. in our workplaces. And business is going to play a, a big part in that because we've got to make sure that the voices of the anti-vaxxers, not based on evidence, not based on proper science, are silenced yeah. and that the voices of uh, the people who are working off evidence and proper facts so that we get our country going again. Absolutely.